Welcome mathematicians. In this video, we'll be looking at data classification. And you can see in front of you on the screen, a tree of how data can be classified. So let's jump straight into this. So first of all, data itself can be considered a collection of facts. I often think if I were to present students with a survey, that is one way of collecting data. It could be a range of possible questions I could ask my students to give me feedback on. For example, I could ask them to quote numbers, such as their age, their height, Maybe some words describing how they're feeling, how confident they are on a subject. Could be a measurement they need to make for me. Could be an observation they've made. Could be a description. There's many, many ways in which we can get data from a group of people. So let's first of all look at some classifications of data. The first category of data is categorical data. These types of data describe the characteristics of something. They're also known as qualitative data. So an example of categorical data would be the gender of a person, maybe the names of places such as India, America, England, or the color of a car, red, white, etc. Now under categorical data, we can further subdivide into two additional categories. So under categorical data, the first subcategory is nominal data. Now these types of categorical data describe something and their order is not important. So for example, the color of a car, you could classify as blue, red, white, green, whatever. The order of which isn't important. A blue car is not any better than a white car, for example. Or subjects studied at school. English, maths, geography, science, history, etc. Once again, there's no real order of hierarchy in terms of which subject is more important than the other. So these represent categorical nominal data. In both examples, the order of the data is not important. Also under the subheading of categorical data is ordinal data. These types of categorical data describe something again, however their order is important, hence the name ordinal. So some examples of ordinal data. Assessment feedback. You might receive the following information, that your work is outstanding, excellent, average, satisfactory, non-satisfactory. There's a distinct order ranking that data. Also a survey response where you strongly agree, agree, Neutral, disagree, strongly disagree. In both of these examples, the order of the data is important. It's categorical and it's ordered. So we call it categorical data under the subheading of ordinal data. The alternative data to categorical data is numerical data. Now these types of data use numbers to describe something. Also known as quantitative data because it involves quantities. Examples of numerical data could include age, weight, temperature, and the counting of something. Just like categorical, numerical data has its own subclassifications. So the first of which is continuous data. These types of data are mostly a measurement of something. This type of numerical data can be divided into further units. So for example, a person's weight, that's a measurement. It could be 70.6 kilograms, or it could be measured more precisely as 70.64 kilograms, or even more precisely, as 70.642 kilograms. The measurement of a person's weight has infinite possibilities, depending on the precision of how you measure it. Likewise, the temperature. It is continuous data. It could be 22 degrees, or it could be 22.8, or it could be 22.81 degrees. It just depends, again, on the precision of the measuring device. There's all infinite possibilities of measurement. That is continuous data. In both examples, the data can be measured to a range of precisions. Finally, numerical data can also be represented as a subclassification of discrete data. These types of data is mostly a count of something. These type of numerical data represent something that cannot be divided into some meaningful parts. So let's look at some examples. The number of students in a class, it's fixed. It's discrete. You can only have a whole number. Half a student has no real meaning. Likewise, the number of matches in a matchbox. You might have 100, 102, but you don't have 100.3786 matches. In both examples, the data can be counted as a whole number. That's a simplified example of how to classify something as numerical discrete data. Let's look at some examples. So first of all, I want you to consider the following six pieces of data. I want you to classify them as either categorical or numerical as the first task. And the second task is to further classify the data as either nominal, ordinal, continuous, or discrete. So please pause here 
and have a go at these six examples with classification. Welcome back, let's try these. So first of all, your favorite football team. That doesn't involve numbers, that is categorical. Is there an order? Well, there is in my mind in terms of what's number one, but generally speaking, this is nominal. There's no particular order to which football club is the favorite. Second example, the number of customers visiting a store over a weekend. That can be counted, that's numerical. And because it can be counted as a whole number, it is discrete. The third example, rating a restaurant as poor, average, good, and outstanding. That's categorical. And there's definitely an order from poor to outstanding. So it's categorical data, and it's also ordinal data. Number four, the heights of trees in a rainforest. That can be measured, so it's numerical. And because it can be measured to a range of precision, we consider that to be continuous data. Number five, the breed of dogs available at a pet store. That's categorical. And there's no particular order, so that's nominal data. And finally, the outcome of rolling a six-sided die. That's numerical. We get a number from one to six, which is fixed and discrete. There's only one to six possible. Warning. Categorical data can also use numbers. So not all numbers are associated with numerical data. Let's look at these. Let's check. Number one, does the number represent a label? If so, it is categorical data. So example would be a postcode. Take 3844. This represents the town of Trelgan. Effectively, this postcode operates as a label. It is therefore categorical data. A five-star rating system. That involves numbers one through to five. However, that represents a bad to excellent experience. Therefore, it too is categorical. A second way to check. Can you calculate a meaningful average from the data? If not, it is categorical data. So example, a collection of mobile phone numbers. The average of three mobile phone numbers has no meaning whatsoever. Therefore, it is categorical data. Even though it involves numbers, it represents categorical data. And birth dates. The average of three birth dates has no meaning as well. Therefore, categorical data. So finally, let's try another six examples. Pause at this point if you wish and come back in a second. Welcome back. So people's shoe sizes. That sounds numerical. Now, is it continuous or is it discrete? This is a little tricky. Because shoe sizes go in halves, that doesn't meet our simple definition of whole numbers. However, they are still fixed. It can be a five, five and a half, six, six and a half, seven, seven and a half. It does not contain all the possible sizes in between. So it is not continuous. It is still in fact discrete. Example two, the movie five star rating. So you've got one star, two star, three, four, five. It does involve numbers. However, it's a rating system where the numbers represent a label. So this is categorical, and indeed it is ordinal because the ranking goes from poor up to excellent. The number of coins in your pocket, we can count them, that's numerical, and because we can count it, it is discrete. The postcodes across Victoria, that's categorical. Whilst they use numbers because the postcodes represent a label or a region, that is going to be categorical. Postcodes also represent nominal data. There's not a specific order. Five, time spent sleeping last night. That's numerical. We can measure the time you sleep to the hour, to the nearest minute, to the nearest second, to the nearest millisecond, and so forth. So it's continuous. There's a range of infinite possible durations of sleep. Finally, mobile phone numbers. We appreciate now that a mobile phone number, whilst it involves numbers, is in fact categorical, and it's nominal. Thanks for watching this video. I hope it's provided some clarity in terms of data classification both in categorical and numerical data, and further below that into nominal and ordinal data, as well as discrete and continuous data. If you've learned something from this, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.